It's 22 hours and 58 minutes into the day of uh, Tuesday, June 28th, uh, 2016. Sitting outside, it's 61 degrees and uh, a little chilly, but I'm gonna, f uh, I'm gonna, f I'm gonna fix the couch up a little bit. Uh, as you can see, there's the, there's the blue tarp on here, and well, it works well for covering the rain. Uh, now I have a problem getting it off and then reattaching it again, so. Uh, I'm going to do some repair work, and the repair work is going to include, you see where the white tape is? I'm going to cut it right at the point where it is here like this. This will create the white part over here and, and, and a white part on the couch, which will eventually be covered up with black tape as well. So, And what will happen is, is that I'll attach strings to either end. And again, duct taping them on uh, uh, it to there, and you'll see how it works. And what will happen? I'll be able to untie it, fold it back, just about here, and uh, that will form that will <coughs> sorry that will form uh, uh, sort of a way of taking off the covers, the the tarp, and sitting on it at night without actually having to re-tape it every single night will be sort of a tie-down system. And that way I can leave this system, I can leave this in place and not touch this at all on this side. Right, so this side here is not going to be touched at all. Uh, and just deal with one side of it. So this, uh, this vlog, this segment of the vlog is going to be in two parts. I'm going to come back because so I'm going to do this now. And after I'm done and I'm sitting on the couch, the couch is all set up again, just sit outside. I'll come back and uh, we'll have the rest of our discussion. All right, so let me change hands because I need this hand to uh, uh, turn the button, to press the button to turn off the uh, recording. Bye. See you in a bit. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I'm done. Uh, as you can see here now, let me just get this situated properly. You can see the red on the couch. That. Uh, Everything is more or less set up and ready to go. So I'm gonna sit down and start relaxing. I got my uh, pill out here. This is the blue, the Bluetooth pill. This is it here. It's all black. So <laughs> good luck seeing it. Uh, it does a good job actually. I was surprised. It was uh, rather lar uh, loud. In terms of, I tried. I, I ended up walking up to the front and uh, scouting a location to film. To not film, but uh, I take videos of the clouds and mat, try to match the dynamics of the cloud. Do a little bit of atmospheric physics uh, and match it up to what I see on the satellites, and uh, go from there to sort of. Uh, uh, to sort of delve further into atmospheric physics, so uh, that's what that is. Uh, I just sat down. I forgot to do something else. I'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> it's always never fails. I'm back, and it's just about uh, 23, 47, and 23 hours and 47. Uh, no, 20, 23 hours and 37 minutes into. Uh, uh, the day into Tuesday, June uh, 28th, 2016. And I'm back. This was, I've been waiting for about 10 minutes to do the thing that I had forgotten to do. And that always happens. You, 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 you have a list of things that need to get done. Uh, you don't always have a checklist. You keep it in your mind. 
And at the end of the day, you sit down, or at the end of the area, at the end of, you've, you've, you think you've completed all the tasks, and as you sit down, you're just sitting down, and you realize you forgot to do something. And uh, you have to go back and sort of fix that up. Ugh. It's rather cool out today, so it's, that's a good thing. Uh, it's about 61 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's getting colder. There's a cold wind coming in. Uh, what it, uh, I look, I, I've got the, I got everything in the editing bay, so there's going to be uh, vlogs for the 24th to the 28th. Uh, the 25th is actually missing. The I didn't do any vlogging on the 25th. That's when I had the uh, plumbing problem, and it took me 12 hours to repair uh, the, the uh, plumbing issue, and uh, I never. Uh, got around to vlogging because I was just pushing myself uh, beyond my typical limits. Because usually, uh, after I just after I, after I do the hiking, do food shopping, uh, my body is tired enough that uh, there isn't really much else I do during the day. But th that's when I also got, got the couch. I just, you know, this the couch is a new thing, and uh, it was after the couch about two o'clock in the morning that everything kind of crapped out and. So, by the time I finished at 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, any hopes of vlogging were gone for Sunday, and the vlogging began again, uh, uh, basically, uh, Monday morning, I think it was, I think it was 18 minutes into the day, or something like that, in other words, it started, it was still nighttime, it was still, most people would have considered it part of Sunday, but, uh, uh, the way we do our timing here, and, and the fact that days often morph into a single day uh, there's no issue with uh, sort of dividing the days because sometimes I don't notice them and sometimes uh, and in this case you'll, you'll have more than one day uh, sort of in terms of a night period of when you're going to sleep you'll have more than one uh, night in the day and it really depends on how long you sleep uh, so it, things are going well. We're now uh, I'm now moving towards uh, filming for Kauai uh, Tea House TV. That's coming up. Uh, I have two shows I'm going to be working on there. Uh, I'm working on INN again. So things are actually starting to move along. The work with the camera, with the DSL camera, the Nikon DSL, is done. Uh, all the testing sh test shots are done. The sound is, is all right. It's good. Uh, the video, the uh, focusing quality is good. So we're good to go for uh, bringing uh, the new video shoots in into the schedule now. And that's the be the next thing is, is getting getting the uh, the shooting into uh, the uh, uh, into the schedule and get it done on a regular basis, just the way we're doing here with the daily vlog. I'm gonna get the daily vlogs was a process and uh, this is going to be the same thing for the other shows. The other shows are going to be a process to make sure they're working into the schedule and that we keep things going. So uh, tonight I have, what do I have to do tonight? I had to do some script work tonight. I was supposed to do some some, some shooting but I'm going to just do the script work tonight. And I have uh, some work to do on uh, open the Open Protocol Institute. Uh, there's still a, 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 there's still a good chunk of work that has to be done there, and then I have to do some work on uh, the Mars Alpha project, the uh, Mars Analog Research Station project. That has to be worked on as well. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's enough to get done, and uh, we have to sort of see how things end up going, uh, and uh, where the progress is in terms of dealing with everything. So. I'm going to leave this here for now. Uh, I think our discussion has gone on long enough and uh, getting a little tired. Or just not really tired, but uh, my eyes are kind of closing because the, the the fatigue of the weekend uh, for the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday just now kind of hit. And that's happened. It, it takes a while once your body starts relaxing for the full fatigue, for the adrenaline to fully knock off. And then once the full adrenaline fully knocks off, that's when you start feeling the fatigue from the things you push yourself through. 
and that's kind of what's happening now. But rather than being knocked out for days, I'm knocked out for hours, and that's why we won't really see a gap in the vlogs and the days uh, of, of vlogging. So the days will be there. And you know, that there's not always because it's not you can't always come up with deep stuff all the time. There's not always there's not always I'm not uploading every single day. I can't produce 30 minutes every single day. That's not not necessarily possible because it's not necessarily enough content to fit into the 30, to get 30 minutes worth of content every single day. So, um, and I, say, I usually look, I look for a minimum of 20. Uh, I look for a minimum of 20 minutes. If I get 20 minutes, like 21 minutes, that's good. Uh, if I get under that, then you know, then I have to wait to the next day and see what I get from there. So, anyways, uh, that's about it for now, and the battery is starting to go down. So, I do need to gonna need, I, that means I'm gonna have to recharge this again soon, and uh, I'll probably do that tonight. And then uh, I'll come back. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow night, and let you know what's going on, what's happened today, and you know, so on and so forth. Anyway, see you in the next segment. Well, hello everybody. It is three hours and. Uh, 23 minutes into the day of Wednesday, June 30th, 2016, and this is another segment of uh, Big Bang Thrills BTS vlog. Yeah, it's been, uh, my days are now sh been shifting again, this is why I'm out here at night actually. Uh, well, <laughs> I was supposed to air out the place tonight, I'm, I am doing that, but I'm just sort of taking a bit of a break. Because uh, I was, I was going to uh, take remove airing out the place uh, and sort of open the back door. I was going to uh, remove that from the schedule, sort of push that off until tomorrow night, but, uh, uh, I decided it would be better to do that now, just to spend an hour out here, a short hour, uh, and rather than sort of waiting till tomorrow night. Uh, anyways, back to our discussion, I was, uh, titled today, uh, I was been titling stuff, uh, uh, for these type of videos as, uh, as mundane, the day-to-day -day existence, the day-to-day -day life. Uh, that's not very interesting in many ways, but if you consider uh, a Mars analog research station, you consider something called the advanced concepts of going into space, particularly for long periods and, and sort of colonizing space. Uh, one has to go back to the mundane in addition to the sort of the uh, extensive research uh, uh, because while you're doing this sort of, sort of the important research, the important uh, aspects of going into the what you could, I guess you could call the esoteric, uh, one also has to remember that the day-to-day -day living has to be done as well. I mean, does anyone does anyone I'm talking to actually know how to manufacture socks? Right, you run out of socks. Right, the socks have holes in them. Our typical thing is, as soon as our socks run out, or we want something, you know, better to a sock, uh, we go and buy another package. You go to the store, you buy a package of socks, and uh, away you go. Right, it's, it's simple. Same thing with our food. We want food, we go to the store, we buy our our food, and we bring it back and we put it in our fridge. But what happens when you're doing pioneering work? You're out in an area that doesn't have all these different things. Well. It'd be a simple thing to do if, if maybe if you're maybe an hour outside the city, because it's an hour drive back in. You can go in once a week and you know to this to a city or a, a pickup, but you need to go back out again. But when, what happens when you're six months to a year away from any of the manufacturing facility, any any resupply depot? Well, that's when you start to have to think about supplying yourself. I mean, the Hudson's Bay, I mean, this is a bizarre thing, is the Hudson's Bay, because uh, I'm up in Canada, you look at the history of Hudson's Bay, and they were out in the middle of the wilderness uh, setting up trading posts, bringing uh, certain necessities in much of the same way that, we're, that if you were thinking about colonizing space, you'd have to do the exact same thing. You'd have to set out these outposts. And these outposts would supply, would provide a su supply route to further out into space. And the thing is, right now, the way we're set up, we do not have supply, uh, uh, supply depots set up in in space at all. Our closest supply depot is Earth. 
Um, we can't even we, we can't even uh, properly view uh, the ISS, the International uh, the International Space Station, as a supply depot. It doesn't supply it. It needs to be supplied, and it cannot supply a mission to Mars right now, or a mission to, even to the Moon. Let's say you wanted to go from from Earth to the space station to to the Moon, right? Over a prolonged period, can't do that with ISS right now. It's not designed to function that way. It itself is very much dependent on uh, what's going on down the ground now in the Baikonur. It was uh, NASA, but now it's primarily the Russian space station. And if you look at the history of ISS, the International, International Space Station, although you have a lot of bravado coming out of NASA, the, pro the, pro the program is primarily the, uh, the old Soviet program. It's, it's basically Russia is handling everything right now. So... Uh, <laughs> We we are significantly far out from uh, we call voyages in space, the of the sort of that Magellan did. Uh, so there is a need for an analog. There is a need to go back and study these, these things again. And this is what I did partially as I was setting my work up and my offices. I began to realize that these were my ships. These were my Magellan. This was my Starship Enterprise. And that if you were on the Starship Enterprise, for those of you who are Star Trekkie fans, that you would have to have, you'd have to clean the carpets. You have a nice, car nice carpeting. Everything's, everything's carpet on the uh, space station. Well, you, you're going to have to vacuum it. You're going to have to clean it. There's going to be dust. Uh, there's going to be human waste. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, there's laundry. You'd have to do laundry. And the thing is, is, on TV, they kind of sort of fudge around that is by uh, having these the food replicators that replicate with a beam in food. The, the food just all of, all of a sudden appears. <laughs> That's not reality. I mean, and the thing is, this, there's no scientific basis for even doing that in the future. We know this from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The way, and the way they get around the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the, the, the realities of quantum mechanics, in uh, in uh, uh, Star Trek, is they have these Heisenberg uncertainty compensators. They 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 they, they resolve the problems of Heisenberg of the Heisenberg uncertainty principles that they have in Star Trek to get around some of these shortcuts they take, so they don't have to show someone doing laundry. And you know, in Star Trek, you see uh, you know you see. Uh, uh, let's go back to the old. St you wouldn't, you wouldn't see, you wouldn't see Spock or uh, 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 Commander Kirk doing any laundry because uh, they'd have uh, their women doing it for them. They'd have these, you know, the beautiful space aliens uh, on their ship uh, doing the laundry. <laughs> That's the uh, the fifties uh, view where women should be doing the laundry, doing the cooking, and so on. And so you know, the woman's place, right? Uh, but even in uh, the Star Trek The Next Generation was supposedly the more accurate one. Is Star Trek The Next Generation took sci-fi, and I'm going to call it sci-fi, to a whole new level because sci-fi typically used science as a background. There's no real, uh, in many of the sci-fi, there's no real science to the back, to the science fiction. Because it was probably call it sci science fiction. It is a fantasy. It really is a fantasy. The only, you know, the earlier stuff it, 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 it's fant it's an, as fantastical as, as it's as much of a fantasy as the old B uh, 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 sci-fi movies were. I mean, the thing is, for me, there is a genre called sci-fi. Uh, if you look at things like uh, even well, Godzilla, there was a Plan Nine from Outer Space. Uh, there's the one with the, uh, the Day the Earth Stood Still uh, that produced a band called Clatu. In the 1970s, go look at the, about on YouTube. Go back, look at the uh, the ro uh, the robot. I think it's called Clat Two. Uh, go look up do, look up for a band called Clat Two on uh, YouTube, and you'll see there's a number of interesting albums there uh, <laughs> that are sort of space oriented. That sort of were influenced by these uh, uh, these uh, early science fiction. A lot of the uh, uh, scientists themselves who 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 created NASA. Uh, who did the initial, initial moon line? A lot of these people were heavily influenced by science fiction. So science fiction and sci-fi, in many ways, is really uh, 
an important beginning step for a, a lot of scientists, including myself, because it, it you just sort of say, okay, I want to I want to take what I see, the 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 idea of what I see, and see how close I can get to actually getting it done. And this is certainly the, the situation here is that uh, I'm working on trying to replicate uh, uh, or get the idea of what needs to be done in order to have a uh, life like I see in the science fiction. Like, like give you an example, one of the science fiction, uh, not, it's not really a science fiction show, it's a cartoon, uh, Kim Possible, they have this, uh, uh, everybody around her is a scientist basically, except for her and Ron, but her p parents and all the villains are all scientists and stuff like that. Uh, and then she has a best friend on the computer called Wade. He's, he's a ten-year-old genius, and he's got these, he lives in this room completely. Uh, doesn't have to go anywhere because he's got all these computers around him and uh, can do everything through his computers. Well, the reason why I do everything through my computers now is because of Wade. It, it, that was sort of I said, like, "Wow, that's interesting." And I was watching. I like the show anyway. I said, "Let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can sort of uh, build enough of a network that, even using using refurbished parts, that uh, I could do something like that." And I've got it done. So you know, there are ways of of doing things uh, cheaply and sort of creating your own uh, uh, starship enterprise. That you can have something like this, where where uh, you you're doing what's called a Mars analog research station. We, we're, you're trying to develop an analog that's something that's comparable to uh, what you would see uh, in a science fiction movie or a science science fiction show. Anyways, I'm gonna leave this here for now. I think this is gonna be enough for uh, another episode. So uh, probably see you in the next episode. All right, take it easy. I kind of ended abruptly the last the uh, last segment, which was just a couple seconds ago. So I'm not going to give you a time and date stamp. It's about ten, you know, it's been about ten minutes so far. I checked the timer, and we're about four or five minutes off of uh, the next episode. So we have a few more minutes to talk. Uh, so where were we talking about? Yeah. So I've I've got my sort of my spaceship here. This is my star, uh, Starship Enterprise. And as I've been working on my Starship Enterprise, doing the science, I realized that you also need to have some playtime. Uh, you know, and as I was coming up and doing my re research, I realized what I wanted to play at was uh, the dirty type of stuff. I still like my cartoons and stuff like that. I uh, like the anime. But I tended not to be more on the guy side of things in terms of anime and cartoons, but more on the girl side of things. And uh, they have things. They do things like cooking. They do uh, a lot of artwork. There's a lot of there's a lot of extra stuff that they do. The very you know sort of a creative environment that sort of uh, lend itself to me. So even though I'm taking a break, I'm still working with my mind. I'm still creating. I'm still developing. I'm still pushing the boundaries of my limits. Because if I went back to the guy stuff, uh, which I did as a kid, uh, there wouldn't be much. That was new. It was always going to be the same type of stuff. With basically your GI Joe, it was it's like uh, it's always about fighting. It's always about the you know the masculine stuff, uh, <laughs> which we would classify as masculine, anyways. Um, and from what I looked at, and from what I've experienced uh, in, in, in my initial sort of look into things, this was including the creation of a. Uh, a role-playing character, right? like the geeks you do this thing called RPG, uh, a role-playing game where you take a character and you develop a character, and you 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 play that role. Uh, ironically enough, if you uh, when I was doing my, my searches uh, for books and everything, uh, I went down and I found a number of old books, particularly these are Victorian era era, era Victorian era books, and as I began researching, I realized that. A lot of the authors use pen names, use pseudonyms. Uh, instead of writing as themselves, they wrote, they, they wrote their books as a character. And this way allowed them to stay in society as they normally would be, but uh, not be recognized as all that. And they could take the stories that they see around, they can observe people, they could be a people watcher, and take these stories and uh, turn them into novels. And so a lot of the earlier books have a lot of personal experience in them. So you can go back and read a book, let's say, like Jane Eyre or uh, something from Jane Austen. Uh, Jane Eyre is a book, as uh, a book, as a story. Go back, take a, take a look at everything, 
and ask yourself, okay, what, who, who was this person? What was their experience like? Because they are writing from experience. There is an, there's, a, there's an experience behind this. The same thing with a role-playing game. The role-playing game uh, has this sort of thing where you have to go out and do research. This, this is why it's a geek thing. You have to research the role that you're playing. Uh, if you're playing someone from the uh, from the Dark Ages in in, in, in Middle Earth, what they call it, this is what they call the, Ho the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings type of thing, you're looking at uh, uh, basically uh, England 18, uh, 800s. Uh, if you're doing vampires, most of the vampire stuff comes from about 1800s. Bram Stoker. Uh, you'd look into that type of stuff. In other words, you'd look into your character, you do the research for the character, and then you develop your character on out. So I began doing that, uh, oof, I think it was 2005, 2006, that time frame there. And I created a character, lived online as a character. And I decided, because I, I've always a guy, I just said, let's, let's go on, so online and live as a girl. And as I was developing the character, uh, what I decided to do is I decided to live, to live that character. Rather than as being a fictional character, but take the, I, the, things, the things I felt, uh, the way I felt, and really put them into the character. So the character, uh, if you met the character online, you'd meet my personality. In other words, my, my personality does not necessarily meet my body. And I took these personalities, brought them out, and developed them into a character. And this was sort of what led, it led into developing the Kawhi Tea House uh, uh, well, t a decade later. Is that This is the type of thing that I that I found that was interesting. And I said, you know, you need to have this sort of geek experience. Uh, uh, if you're going to do the heavy work, you need the geek side of things, you need the fun side of things. Because you can't always be always strictly in a work mode. You have to have these times off. You have to tie, find a way to sort of back off and go, okay, this is my vacation period. This is how I'm going to relax. This is how I'm going to uh, sort of exist with things. Because if you don't do that, what ends up happening, this is what we see a lot with the astronauts, this is what we saw with uh, uh, the Biosphere 2 in uh, Arizona, we saw the people go crazy. We wonder why you have a love triangle with astronauts driving across the country in a diaper to kill somebody else, you know, who, who was involved in that love triangle. So, uh, <laughs> these are, this is the reality of what goes on. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily pop up in the news, but this is the reality of what happens. Uh, within the space program, within within these programs that sort of isolate people into these sort of uh, capsules that say, okay, let's see how well you can live. And well, they don't. And that's because the, the, the environment is is so sterile that there's no life to it. And it really affects the human mind. The human mind has to have, I guess what you call feminine comforts. I mean, guys, we take care of this stuff. We, we sort of take some of this stuff for granted. But the stuff that Women did in, in, in er, the early pioneering days, in terms of taking care of carrying the house, designing the house, developing the house, uh, the clothing, this color, all these different things. They're needed. It really affects the mind when they're not there, and this is a large chart to the problem when you're talking about the the, the space station. You're talking about uh, working, going on a trip to Mars. You know, colonizing Mars. You're going to need a lot of the sort of the. The things we take for granted, the things that we consider to be mundane, are going to be are going to be necessities. These are the tiny cracks. And these are the the insignificant points that cause uh, catastrophic failure uh, later on down the road. And if we don't take care of them now, or sort of begin to understand them uh, later on, it's going to be much worse. So anyway, that's that's kind of the way I, I'm approaching these things. And this is sort of you know uh, I will talk about more about this, but. Uh, now we are now we're going over time. So uh, that's it for this episode. I will see you in the uh, next episode of uh, Big Bang Theory. The first uh, segment, anyways. All right. See you then. Professor. And Professor of what? Professor of Physics. Oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light. 
speech rules here at Democratic Earth.